Jetson Dimension. I'm here with Raven. This is day two. $10,000 prize pool. Winner takes 5000 And we're going to see the, the winner's match. Eco versus Pavel. So the winner of this advances. Raven, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good. And this match is going to be a real interesting one because Pavel's taking quite slow decks. He's taking Freeze Mage, um, the Reno Warlock, and Druid. Whereas Ecop's taking a slightly more aggressive lineup, like for example with his Zulok. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see which one comes out on top here as these decks, are, how they line up together. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm really curious to see more of Pavel play because, you know, he's, he's so... Uh, meticulous and uh, consistent when he makes uh, decisions with those those really uh, complicated decks. So he is an absolute control player versus Ecop that uh, I remember Ecop mostly playing control decks, but for this uh, tournament he brought those those aggressive ones. So we'll see how yeah. they match up. Yeah, I think switching up styles now again is pretty good as well because if you get into sort of a if you continue to play, say, the same set sort of decks or strategies, then you become quite predictable. And in a tournament like this, where these players beforehand know which three other players they're in a group with, then you can really, you know, use that to advantage in terms of making your lineup for the group and making it as, uh, as strong as possible based on who you're playing against. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we kick off with the Arena Lock versus a Tempo Mage, Ecop having a really good start with the Mana Worm and uh, Sorcerer Apprentice. This is what he has to have to win versus. Reno Lock because I believe it's a it's a good matchup for Reno Lock. Do you agree? Yeah, I think it's pretty good. The the Tempo Mage really just has to be hyper aggressive in this matchup and just burst them down and, and hope it's enough and hope they don't have Reno. Other than that, the game goes on a little bit and once the Warlocks cleared the board once, it becomes very hard for the Tempo Mage to come back. Yeah, but he still has the chance if he is, as you mentioned, hyper aggressive. If you deal enough damage, there is no Reno. You can just finish the game with fireballs. Uh, before your board is cleared or before uh, the, the Reno Lock heals himself. But there are other ways. You don't always have to have Reno. You can have anti heal bot with Brown, maybe. Yeah, and, and to be honest, just a good board clear as well. Like maybe a Shadow Flame board clear so it doesn't you know, injure yourself too much later on. But um, it's going to be interesting to see whether Ecop actually plays around the potential of Coin Hellfire. It's hard to play around cards in Reno Lock because you know they only run one offs, but you can get punished super hard if you just run into an obvious AoE. Yeah, I absolutely agree. But on the other hand, can he really afford to play around Hellfire? You know, this matchup is similar to the old Mechmage versus uh, the Giants Handlock, where you just had to close your eyes and hope there is uh, no Moltens at some point. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely that was the uh, the most valid strategy to win in that match. Uh, Ecop is playing around AOE though. He traded with the Mana Worm. He uh, he luckily for him he portaled into a, a Creeper, which is fairly durable versus AOE. But maybe now the issue for Ecop is he hasn't put enough pressure on to Pavel to play the Hellfire, so he's gone into the Twilight Drake instead. Yeah, but there is the, the Flame Cannon and the Flame Waker, so he should be able to deal with this. Uh, that will be enough damage to absolutely kill the Twilight Drake. And then, even if you expect the Hellfire, you will have the Flame Waker alive after this, and Haunted Creeper, Haunted Creeper will survive. Yeah, I think even running the Mana Worm in here, even though it's overkill, now it's not because he missed both uh, both shots from the Flame Waker, so perfect Flame Waker from uh, Ecop. But even if Ecop hit both, running the Mana Worm is fine. It's done a lot of work already. And again, it's playing around the AoE, as you said. You keep the Creeper tokens if the board gets taken down. And suddenly, Hellfire doesn't look that juicy. Like, if you Hellfire, you put yourself to 16 and you only kill the Apprentice, but it is the only play Pavel had. Um, he will yeah, I don't think Hungry Crab would have been good enough on, <laughs> on that turn. Unfortunately, the uh, Flame Waker is not a Flame Murloc, so... Yeah, and he pick, uh, picks up a spell that he'll be able to cast, so... Um, that was a possible to damage to face, but he values uh, Azure Drake more. Yeah, this is really scary. You will, you've will you just seen Hellfire, and as I said earlier, like the, the Warlock deck, the Reno, only runs one of every AoE, so one Shadow Flame, one Hellfire, and normally a de uh, Demon Wrath as well. So he's not too afraid of the AoE follow-up now, so you may as well just put another big minion on the board that's not weak to things like Dark Bomb by itself, and just pile on the pressure. And even now with the uh, the Lotheb down, uh, you know, you can just go face at this point. you kind of got to be wary of Reno, I suppose. 
Oh yeah, you do, but on the other hand, if there is no Reno, you, you are in a great position. So you might be also afraid of Shadow Flame. So if you don't deal with Lothab, Shadow Flame is a possibility that it will just clear your board. And uh, Ecop, even though he has Antonidas, he doesn't have any burst at the moment in his hand. No Frostbolt and no Fireball. So a, a tough decision what to do. Um, do you just uh, trade your Azure Drake and ping and then play a minion still? Or do you just go for face with everything? Pink face, hope there is no heal because there's only six cards in hand. Yeah, I mean, going all in seems okay because he has duplicate and unstable portal next turn. So it's not like he doesn't have cards that he can play. He could even hold off the apprentice if he really wanted to. Um, what do you actually think about the duplicate in this deck? Not a, a too common secret we see in uh, Tempo Mage. Uh, duplicate is interesting, and uh, that's because it's a surprise secret. Like, normally you do not expect it, but it gives you more cards in hand. So, uh, like, Mirror Entity is, is great, but if you can mix things up a bit, you might actually get a really good result. And getting more Flame Wakers, getting more uh, Apprentices can help you a lot too, to get those cards. Yeah, it's definitely uh, an interesting pick. Um, oh my god, I just... I imagine if Hungry, hungry Crab, so bad. His wor wording was a little bit different, and it was like, kill a minion with two health, gain the, 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 you know, the buffs. Like, they would be so good. Kill, kill <laughs> be target a... Flame Waker. Kill target Flame Waker, or Murloc. <laughs> One or the other. Do you remember what sick. race is the Flame Waker, actually? How, how are they? Those are not Nagas, right? Uh, oh, it's the same as, uh, like, Lucifron and that, yes. isn't it? Uh, I think it's Salamander. I have no idea. That's a good. That that could be some information for a video from you. Maybe that sounds like a video you should do. Yeah, for sure. The races of Warcraft. Of, of Molten Core. The races of Molten Core. Yeah. <laughs> Get those core hands in there. Yeah, absolutely. Core pops as well. <laughs> yeah. So this is. I mean, so what damage have we got here? We've got two, three, four, seven, ten, eight. I guess Ecop's just gotta see where these uh, oh, hits man. from the Flame Waker lands in. Look at that patron's patron. pretty, pretty, patron's pretty reasonable when you can ping it, as the Mage Hero Power is actually uh, one of the better Hero Powers you can get some from Finley when you play that version of Patron. So not the worst unstable portal I've ever seen by uh, any stretch of the imagination, especially when you've already seen the Hellfire. Yeah, absolutely. Um... And Ecop's still uh, having an advantage, but you know, a, a single good AoE, something like a Demon Wrath, can can change this board uh, really fast. Um, unless uh, Ecop actually goes for that uh, Patron Ping this turn. Yeah, I like Patron Ping because you kind of want the Frostbolt to almost guarantee an Antonidas. You run the 1-1 one -one in um, to throw it away, I think, because then you duplicate. It's actually pretty reasonable, whether it's the Flame Waker or the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Absolutely. All right, so Dr. Boom uh, for Pavel, but uh, Sludge Belcher with Doom, uh, Doomsayer. This is not something you see often <laughs> from any deck. Uh, no, it's definitely a, a interesting selection of cards. But it doesn't um, work against uh, Farable, Frostbolt, and Ping. Yes, that is definitely a... <laughs> That's definitely just lethal. Pretty good top deck from Ecop finishing the game, but you know, in a realistic sense, when there's no Reno in Pavel's hand, uh, he, he had the ability to put on a lot of pressure again. He could have pinged his own patron, that's the 3 2, uh, to make it a 3 1 and summon another 3 3, push through with that kind of stuff with the Frostbolt as well. So, you know, the game went pretty well for Ecop there. He got all the right. Uh, all the right moves early on, and that's the sort of issue that comes up for this Reno deck in terms of board control, where you don't have the Reno or you don't have the AoE, and other than the Hellfire, Pavel didn't really have either. Yeah, and to be honest, even though it was, uh, I think it was a good matchup for Pavel still, and uh, but sometimes Reno lock can really whiff. You don't get because you mostly play one offs. Like you only play one offs. Uh, you, you might not get the cards you need. In a specific time, but even if Ika uh, would lose versus the deck, he still had a very good matchup versus Druid with the Temple Mage. Uh, yeah, definitely. And um, so you know, Ecop's lineup, yeah, especially this Temple Mage, seems to be doing pretty good work for him so far in this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. And now we're going to see that Freeze Mage from Pavel versus Ecop's Warrior. Which is so this should warrior. be. We'll see. We'll see how this matchup goes because we just saw Pavel 
play a good game versus either use Patron Warrior and actually take the game, even though a lot of people would agree that it's uh, favoured towards the Patron Warrior. We'll see how ECOP plays it and if um plays it a slightly different style, because I think RDU might have committed a bit too much to the board and not focused heavily enough on the armor generation, and that might have cost him the game. But we'll see how we, uh, yeah, we'll see how ECOP gets on with this one. You know, like the more I play this matchup and the more I've seen this matchup, I, I think it's really depending on what cards the players get. If uh, Freeze Mage is too slow on drawing cards, a Warrior will have a chance to rush the Freeze Mage. But if Freeze Mage is drawing well, then the Warrior also has to, uh, to draw all the, the combo pieces to have this big Armor Smith turn. And if he has two Armor Smith turns with double Armor Smith, that's where the game ends. Because it is it is possible, as we talked last time, to try to pressure the mage. But the, the the best strategy, I believe, is just fatigue. Just armor up as much as possible and uh, get that double arm smith turn. Yeah, I agree. Because the difference between the fatigue matchup and the pressure matchup is the fatigue matchup is more consistent because you're less reliant on your opponent drawing badly. Um, because fatigue... You should be in fairly reasonable control of being able to create the armor. So, um, whereas, you know, being able to put pressure on, sometimes Mage does whiff and doesn't have any answers and you can steamroll them, but a lot of the time they do because the deck's built to draw that. So, being able to just play for the fatigue match, I think, is definitely the right way to go in this matchup. Absolutely. But I'm still not clear on how many cards you can draw early on. So, for example, the Zako of Pain. Do you really want to draw just one card with it? Or do you want to leave it for now and draw maybe a, a couple more cards? Like, how many cards is too many cards? Yeah, it's tough. I think that's um, sort of uh, lines up with what your hand involves. As we saw in the previous game with RDU, he didn't have Death Spite that he kind of needed as a whirlwind effect for his armor smith. So then you do just want to get into the Death Spite because the trade-off of drawing more cards is you're gaining a hell of a lot more armor. So it really does depend on the, on the hands. And Ecop's hand's looking pretty reasonable. And something a difference in this matchup versus Pavel, uh, instead of Pavel versus RDU was that Ecop's got Dr. Boom ready for turn seven, whereas RDU had it in, like, I think it was in like the bottom five cards in his yeah. deck. And Dr. Boom's pretty good versus Freeze Mage, if anyone didn't know. <laughs> Yeah, Ardy was put in an awkward position almost every turn, starting with uh, just Gromash into Alexstrasza and being forced to overextend with patrons just to, to be able to kill um, Thorison as well. So uh, definitely the Ecop has a, a bit of a better start, but then there's that Thorison with all the great cards for Pavel. Yeah, are they the right cards though? That's my worry. It looks really good to just slam for uh, Thorison to get that much value because that is a lot of cards. But yeah, I think he's. Pr I mean, the Antonidas and the Thanos are really strong, but I think he would almost prefer just you know like the, the Frost Bolts and the Ice Lances to be able to squeeze in more damage into one turn. Also, what's important I think is that Ecob is setting up Patron for next turn, so he has our Ar Armorsmith on board already. It will be hard to kill. And next turn he can go with Green Patron into Inner Rage into Whirlwind. Yeah, and that's going to be a good chunk of armor. If you recall, I think on turn 8, RDU was only sitting on 6 armor. So already, Ecop's looking like he is going to play the Patron turn and generate quite the amount to be able to you know, get the early start on pushing that extra health. So now the big question is, can Pavel uh, deal easily with this board um, in the current situation? Uh, Ecop has an execute for a possible Doomsayer Nova, but there is no Doomsayer for Pavel yet. If he uses Blizzard, mm, Blizzard is, is probably reasonable, even though it's um, giving a lot of armor to. Oh, there was a Flame Strike. Yeah, it's Flame Strike. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Flame Strike's there. Flame Strike's probably okay. Yeah, uh, much but, but, than but but as you were saying, no, and, and quite right. Like the AOE gives your opponent so much armor, but if you don't do that, then there's well, there's no Frost Nova Doomsayer. So, the, you know, you get, they're, they're going to get the armor, and then if next turn they have a Whirlwind again, then they gain the armor anyway, so you may as well guarantee the AoE clear and just get it off the board, and there's one armor smith down. Yeah, but there is the second part. The, um, even though you gave a lot of armor, you are dealing with board. So, at some point, Ecob will run out of threats if, if you're just dealing with the threat after threat. And there are not that many threats, so the patron board is one. Then Dr. Bomb is the other, Gromash is the third one, and then the second patron wave is like the last threat that Ecop can put, right? And then we have fatigue draws. Yeah. 
Um, that's completely Ryan Pavel's doing a really good job of keeping his hand pretty full. I don't. I was going to say we might see a Frost Nova now, but it looks like Pavel's going to uh, favour the Frost Bolt onto the Doctor Boom just to slow him down a little bit. I wonder if he's going for Blizzard next turn. Like at some point, you have to cast those Blizzards. Yeah, I think it'll be pretty okay next turn because again, the the seven attack from the Doctor Boom is scary. Freeze Mage, other than Frost Nova Doomsayer, struggles to deal with the you know like the big minions because they don't really have a direct answer that feels good. So being able to just play one Frost Bolt, save seven attack, and then Blizzard save another seven damage, and then Blizzard again, all the while keeping any additional minions played sort of out of the game for a couple of turns. Absolutely. So good decision there, killing the Mad Scientist uh, to protect uh, Dr. Boom from Blizzard. But on the other hand, Blizzard is actually going to freeze it again. So a consecutive Blizzard will buy a Pavel sometime. Yeah, and there's an Iceland. So slowly but surely, Emperor Thorison is looking really good now. With Thor uh, with the Frostbolt, the Iceland combined with the Thanos and the Antonidas, it's starting to really you know, pick up in those value cards, because you do need to get your most out of Emperor, especially in this kind of matchup where you need every single point of, like, extra damage possible. So how many Fireballs can Pavel get? If he if he goes for Thorison, at least two with Frostbolt and, and Iceland, and still he will have, what, three more mana, so he can yeah, go so for Frost can... Nova. Yeah, Frost Nova, so it'll be three Fireballs, and he gains the damage from the Frostbolt Iceland. Oh, he even hits that one of the fireballs here. That's this is really nice, and the, because now he's just held off the Doctor Boom, he's still on thirty health. And this is what we saw in the previous match where Pavel was actually under no health pressure for a lot of the game, and now he's um, locking out the weapon to try and get double air, the, the double turn from the Emperor. But we can see that Ecop's not gonna let that happen when he's holding Slam Execute. Yeah, Ecop has an answer. But then, on the other hand, it does um, force an execute. So even though um, Ecop will not be, uh, well, has that execute, Pavel will hope that, hey, maybe then for Antonidas, you will actually not have a second execute. Because if, if he just, if, if he will not cast the Frostbolt, Ecop just attacks into it, kills it with a weapon, and uh, sitting on an execute still. So with that play, you do protect your Antonidas, in your mind at least. Yeah, and then, you know, like you said, the, the Warriors only got two executes, right? And the two big targets are Alex Strazer and Antonidas. So this, you know, Pavel creating an awkward turn for Ecop is really good and, and actually shows, like, Pavel's mastery of this matchup, I imagine. We saw him take down RDU and he's, it looks like he's in a, at least a decent position at the moment versus Ecop. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um... It's hard to see how many cards he has left in the deck, but uh, with that Pyroblast, that will deal easily with the with the extra armor as well. So a lot of damage, and he will hope with the Frost Nova and um, Iceland to the to the face that Ecop doesn't have a second execute, or at least he doesn't have an, an activator. Unfortunately for Pavel, Ecop has them, but still. Yeah, and this is probably the, the, the wrong way round Pavel wants these minions dealt with. He probably would have preferred Alex Straza than the Execute, and then suddenly with Antonidas feeling safe after seeing two Executes, you do a turn like this and they really bank those Fireballs. But this is still pretty reasonable. He's got three Fireballs, Pyroblast, and, uh, and the Thalnos, which can you know, obviously you know, squeeze in some extra damage as well. Imagine if Eco would not have an Execute and Activator. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah, oh, it's kind of interesting. He could actually re-equip Despite and do it that way if he really wanted to. Suppose he values the extra four damage versus the potential uh, easy Grom proc yeah. for the uh, the twelve attack. I, th I think four damage is uh, or like four damage is really important overall because at some point you want to get Mage lower with the Fatigue War to get him low enough so that he actually uh, dies with the health remaining. Uh, Ice Block doesn't work in the Fatigue War because if fa Fatigue kills you on your turn where the Secret is not active. Yeah, exactly. And the way you play the match is to purposely set the mage up so that it dies on their own turn due to the fatigue, as you said, to get around that um, to get around the ice block. And this is quite nice using the Thalnos to AoE down the, um, the the two minions on the board, remove the threat of the high damage of the frothing berserker. Oh man, Acolyte of Pain shows up. I don't know if that's good or bad. It's probably bad. Not only the minion doesn't do anything when you play it, you can draw a card. You're getting closer to fatigue. Yeah, it's a little bit rough. I mean, what what do you even want to do here? Like, because you know, if you go in with Grom, it's 
going to die, and then you suddenly run in, like, pretty much run out of threats. Uh, depends on how many cards are in the deck. Like, you can... Can you really just maybe kill it and armor up? <laughs> or, like, armor up pass and see what's going to happen? This is really intricate, because if you give time to Mage, you'll be in a bad spot. You still have one more armor spell in your deck, so maybe you want to draw, and you want to... To generate some more armor through it, but I feel like Ecop is really getting downwards in this matchup for now. Yeah, I think just uh, from a quick, quick, probably bad maths, Pavel's got 34 damage in his hand over multiple turns. So I think if Ecop just clears this off the board. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, okay. This is dr that was an interesting turn. I don't know why he wouldn't have just attacked anyway. Was there was there any reason for that? Uh, I don't see it actually. Uh, so he yeah, he would have got a whirlwind effect anyway, right? Yeah. Uh, well, not really. I mean, he tried to prepare a whirlwind effect for the next turn. So basically, he wanted to have Gromash be able to attack. Like, if you just attack, he would be playing a weapon and then not attacking with a weapon. So yeah, that's true. So he would not have an activator, and he needed an activator there. Okay, this ghoul's actually going to be pretty nice if he chooses. He's, he's going to leave the ghoul up or charge into the Alex Straza here just to get it off the board. I guess he has to kill the Alex Straza if he wants to keep armoring up past the uh, past the potential damage of the mage. Yeah, and now mage is uh, almost uh, almost out of damage, right? Because we are seeing what 20, 34 damage. So fatigue will play a role. F fatigue damage will be important. Yeah, and he's actually... There we go. <laughs> I was going to say, he might actually start just stacking the damage now, because let's be honest, at this point, the Acolyte isn't really doing much, regardless. Yeah. Um, and the... Uh, and the, You know, you've, you've got the damage. Pavel has the damage he has. Whether, you know, Ecop can use... Just generate enough armor to just battle through the fatigue wall. I'm not quite sure who's ahead on cards. Or behind on cards, should I say. But he does have Ghoul and Armorsmith, which is actually pretty key. He does, but the sad part is that he, he might actually not activate the Whirlwind effect. He used double Whirlwinds. I don't know how many Whirlwinds he used, but, you know, it would be, it'd be a, a bit funny and awkward if you actually die while having a stable Ghoul and Armorsmith on board. If Pavel just continues doing damage. Now he's going to use Pyroblast for 10, putting Ecop at... Uh, actually, that will be 15 after armor up. So is that enough? Uh, uh, he, he has frostbolt. He wins. Has he used two frostbolts? I, I think though? he used two of them actually. Or was it one frostbolt by Iceland's? One Iceland's. Maybe he definitely used a frostbolt on the Doctor Boom, right? That definitely happens. Um, hmm. He just needs a bit more damage. Fifteen. He can deal thirteen. Still get some fireballs in. Yeah, I guess we're gonna see the Doom save Frost over this turn. Pink face. Horrible face. Does he ice lance the armor smith here? Uh, that's actually a pretty smart move because fatigue will t will play a big part in this matchup. Yeah, and suddenly slam doesn't feel too great when it's gonna draw <laughs> you another card. Uh, oh, so man. slam's gonna feel pretty rough. Grim patron does actually nothing here except die. I have seen uh, those matches with fatigue going to five or six, and this is the damage that the mage needs. <laughs> This is actually pretty crazy. Even because even now, it, when you start adding up the sort of potential for fatigue, the ice lance, although um, at this second in time, doesn't do any damage. He can actually just stop a minion from attacking for a turn. So maybe the shredder doesn't attack next turn if it survives, which means you've effectively healed for four. So which which you know, as we said, is pretty impactful when both players are sort of trying to handle the fatigue issues of this matchup. And he just lets his uh, hand die. Yeah, there's not much else that Ecop could have done. I think it's no see... armor, and there's an egg. Doesn't even do any damage. Yeah, the egg is there, but uh, I think you can see excellence of the freeze mage play by Pavel. But just looking at his picture and uh, that he managed to keep his face frozen for so long already. Yeah, frozen. Very good. Pl While I was playing freeze mage, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I expect nothing less. Um. Ecop probably wanted to see this Lotheb much earlier in the game. Lotheb's one of the key cards when you're playing against a, uh, a deck like Freeze Mage, just to just sort of buy yourself an extra turn a lot of the time. The bonus is he can slam his own egg, not draw a card, but gain a 4-4. Yeah, that's actually so th good. There is some benefit of this egg. 
And most of the threats are gone, so... Uh, it will be interesting if those loot, hoarder, uh, loot hoarders actually play a part. And uh, Pavel is the first to, ta to hit Fatigue, and uh, he immediately concedes. That was a really long game, but this time Eco played it really well. And it's, it's so interesting because he seemed to be behind in that race. Yeah, it's, it's really rough. He managed to get a lot of armor, but I think um, Pavel getting that key Emperor off and even hitting that fireball as well, uh, the turn he was playing on playing Emperor, and then just getting the, the two extra fireballs from Antonidas, that's so much damage. Yeah, and he was banking on the, the damage specifically because he early in the game, when I wasn't sure about our uh, Acolyte of Pain, right? He had that Acolyte of Pain and he did draw a lot of cards from it. So drawing so many cards puts you behind at the Fatigue Race. Yeah. It's, um, so, you know, looking pretty good for Ecop so far. Uh, he has got his Warlock now, which is Zoo. Yeah, Zoo versus Freeze Mage. What do you think about that matchup specifically? So, Zoo versus Freeze Mage, originally, I feel, is uh, good for Freeze Mage. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think um, Zoo has to do some insane things to win. The only thing is, with the current version of Zoo we've been seeing, the addition of Bran and cards like Dark Peddler mean you can actually draw into a lot of additional bursts in the form of like Soul Fires, extra Power Overwhelmings, Double Procs on Abusive Sergeant, and uh, Defender of Argus. So, Gormok exactly is potentially another 4 damage. So, if if you go like fast enough, then like you can take this match. But the second the uh, the mage stabilizes, it gets incredibly difficult because the whole deck is built to slow like the board down. And zoo is a zoo, you know, zoo deck. It, it plays by uh, just swarming the board and pushing through with powerful minions and buffs. Absolutely, and an uh, important thing that happened this uh, this game already is that Ecop didn't get a flame imp or anything big. So Pavel had an opportunity to just use the coin and. Uh, get rid of the early abusive yeah and uh got, pavel's got a pretty good follow-up as well with scientist loot hoarder you know, he's got all the good early draw he's probably looking for a frost nova pretty quick um just so he can you, you know utilize the doomsday ready for turn five because turn five is, is the turn that it starts to normally get a little bit dicey against zoo when they start stacking up the minions and then you know maybe a defender of argus comes down and then you know it, it starts to just slightly overwhelm he picked Reliquary Seeker. <laughs> I wonder if there would be an option to actually play it. Most of the, most of the time when you play versus Freeze Mage, you don't want to fill your board. But in a, in case that you actually hit a big implosion and you get a 5-5 out of nowhere, that might that might be a good thing for you. So it, it really depends how Eco will play it. Because sometimes you want to have an empty space for a Doom Guard, let's say, right? Or maybe... Yeah, and the, th the thing is as well, like, uh, there's something to note of his other two choices might have been terrible. Whereas at least Seeker has the potential benefit of making a big impact. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you know that you have Hunter Creeper already. But for now, uh, Ecop is not doing much pressure and um, just Defender of Argus this turn doesn't seem that great. So maybe Nurbin Egg and a, and a tap. Like, he needs more cards to be able to pressure. But then he slows himself down as well. So giving more time to Pavel. I think already, this game already looks uh, that Pavel is in favor, for now at least. Yeah, it's definitely going to, you know, to turn to a bit of a slow burner, which is definitely not what the Zoo player wants. I was just going to say before Ecop drew the second egg, one of the tactics in this matchup is to hold an Arubian egg in your hand and wait for the opponent to do the Frost Nova Doomsayer, or Doomsayer in any way, and then you can play the egg and then just gain the 4-4 with effectively charge on, on your turn afterwards. So that's something he could think about doing, but before he drew that egg, I think he would have been forced to play the, the first one because he just doesn't have anything else. You know, there wasn't really anything else on the board, but you oh, can man. always roll for... <laughs> yeah, and now really Query Seeker is going to be a 5-5, five, five, right? Yeah, and he has the one mana exactly to drop that on the board. I'm actually surprised Ecop's actually holding this long. Is This might be... Oh no, he's not okay. Because <laughs> that seems like a really good board. Like, what are you afraid of? There is the Frost Nova Doomsayer, which is an issue. But that's like your only issue, and you get the 4-4 afterwards from the egg. So it's not too terrible. So, Pavel is uh, forced to fireball the 5-5. Five five. I mean, like if he fireballs the 5-5, five five, there's only 5 damage coming at you. So that's okay. And you still you, you still want to stall. Uh, he wa he was thinking about um, also just you know slamming Thorison on six, and if you have all that burst in hand, there was a chance to just burst the down before it kills you. So you can sometimes race it, but uh, overall, it's probably better to just go with the standard strategy, trying to, to freeze your opponent, deal with the board, and then just Alex Straza combo. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the freeze mage here just wants to just slow everything down and just wait it out. Because the longer the game goes on, and we spoke about this a little bit yesterday, is that Zoo normally hits a point by, say, turn 7 or 8, where they kind of just tap every single turn because their curve is so low that they can play everything they draw quickly and still have mana floating. And the more they tap, the closer they're putting themselves just to lethal, and when Freeze Mage can stall out the game just to extra, extra turns, like with Frost Nova or Ice Block, then, you know, pushing yourself lower it really is an issue when there's cards like Pyroblast in Pavel's deck. Absolutely. I also want to mention that Pavel uh, got a bit lucky with the Ice Barrier uh, being the secret pulled um, by Mad Scientist instead of Ice Block, because you want to get that Ice Barrier early to get the health instead of just sitting on a, on a dead Ice Block. And now, uh, the fact that Ecop played a second Rubian Egg is taking some power off the board, and uh, with only four minions, um, Pavel didn't have to even consider clearing. Four damage is not much, so he could have done anything. That's why it tore some. Yeah, when there's um, when there can be cards like on the board with like buff Defender Vargas, uh, Dark Hiding Dwarf, uh, Doom Guard, you know, suddenly just that amount of damage total from a full, nearly full board, not too threatening. Getting a 4 again, getting lucky implosions, but uh, that's what you expect, like he was even fine with uh, implosion for 2, because yeah. then Torison was dead anyway. Yeah, this is looking a little bit rough for Pavel, he does have, um, I mean he just wants to see a Frost Nova I think of some kind, because the issue is these two eggs are causing like what seems like a good blizzard to uh, actually be terrible. I think what he can do here is just Frostbolt the free 2 play the Mad Scientist, play the Ice Block to force another Ice Berry out of it, and then that will be 5 mana, he can even ping one of the Imps. So, board is not that threatening. Like, it's not that, it's not that you really have to deal with the Rubin Eggs. Hmm. hmm, do you think actually there's a play to... Um, hmm, I'm just trying to think, 3, 4... Do you potentially want to play the Doomsayer? Frostbolt the three two. Try and get Doomsayer off, and then um, and then you can just flame strike and just clear clear the eggs or clear the spiders before they can actually do anything next turn. I think or the, that's the turn after. Sorry. Absolutely reasonable. Like if you frostbolt the three two, you can play a Doomsayer for one. Yeah, I I, I like the play as well. But uh, Pavel decides to go for the heal bot and keeping that Doomsayer for a very important moment where he gets the Frost Nova and the board is even bigger. Yeah, I mean, uh, once you hit the Frost Nova, especially versus Zoo, they only normally run like one owl. So, like, Frost Nova Doomsay is so strong because there's no other, like, good way to deal with the board. But tapping into Lothar feels pretty reasonable at the moment as well. That, yeah. like, again, just get, uh, effectively gains Ecop a, a turn, sort of, you know, like, maybe half a turn, I suppose. Because, you know, the Freeze Mage can do other things, but just not a lot of them because all the spells jump so, so high in cost. Yeah, but uh, still, Ecop um, has a full board, and this board is not doing much damage anyway. Like, uh, there is only those those um, four damage plus Lothep, so Pavel's still in a great shape. Just uh, can wait. And now, b because Mad Scientist survived, uh, will he be able to? Yeah, he will be able to force. Do you just ice block here? Just force the ice barrier, kind of. Uh, yeah, I mean. Let's be honest, with this hand, he either ice blocks or just kills the Void Walker. I think, is he, was he hovering over Doomsayer then? I so think, I think Doomsayer was. is definitely risky. Yeah, yeah I was say, if, if there's something Zoo does, it's buff minions to trade up. <laughs> so uh, with six attack already on board, you are definitely afraid of that plus one coming out from Zoo. There is a Doom Guard for Ecop. So from Ecop's perspective, like obviously Pavel wants to try to survive. He still has some uh, some clears and some damage. So Ecop has to be careful with uh, regards to his health, though. But um, he has uh, some burst potential here, just uh, going with the Defender Vargas, and uh, he'll be able to deal some considerable damage this turn. Uh, trying to play around AOEs as much as possible. But uh, I have to wonder, Raven, how much can you play around AOEs and still be threatening? Yeah, that's the issue, isn't it? Because as you can see, like, I was just going to say, the, the tap there was interesting because Ecop could have played the Dark Iron Dwarf and the Argus and pushed. Um, he is, again, he's sort of just, like, trying to just poke Pavel down, isn't he? But, again, if he just commits, like, or doesn't commit enough to push him, like, he's going to keep tapping and Pavel will just kill him. Like, you know, out of nowhere, Pavel will just kill him or have long enough to drop Frost Nova and clear the whole board anyway. 
And he's still on 20, now like 27 health after the hit in the, on the Ice Barrier. With Antonidas, is that it? Is it just it? Like, slam Antonidas and Ice Block? Get, yeah. uh, get I, the Fireball, and then you have enough. I believe finish. so, because then you can just Fireball, Fireball next turn with Ping or whatever, and then uh, Pyroblast the turn after, and there's... Uh, because it won't be lethal, because Ecop's almost certainly forced to kill Antonidas, which soaks up enough resource for him to probably not be able to pro the block through 27 L. Yeah, exactly. And uh, just like that, I mean, you've seen Lothap as well, so there is... Uh, is there anything for the zoo to actually stop the advance, stop the damage? Kezen Mystic. <laughs> Kezen Mystic. Yes, that's a card that can work. Is there anything from the Dark Peddler? Uh, I don't even think power, like, uh, you know, like, even double power overwhelming is not enough, I don't think. He's gonna play the Doom Guard now to follow up with. Probably won't play the Flame Imp, as I think it might feel a little bit too risky in terms of hell. Yeah, but we know, we know that's it. Um, the thing is that even though this game is lost for Ecop, he's, uh, Pavel still has a Druid in the lineup, and that will be a good matchup. So I wonder if Pavel is going to take uh, the Reno Lock, which, I, it, it is, which is a good matchup for Pavel, or uh, the, the Druid deck next. Yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, I guess you want to... Um, this is the winner's match, right? So, uh, yeah, he probably just wants to make it as close as possible, so I imagine he might take the Reno Lock. Um, and just sort of save what I, what I think is the worst matchup to last. Uh, you know, if he loses this set, then he'll have potentially lost 3-2, not 3-1. Right. Okay, so on the back of Double Fireball, Pablo is taking the, that game versus Zoo, and that was some pain, painful ride versus Ecop. And uh, that, I think that was also a perfect example how, even though you're playing versus those AoEs, you are slamming the Nurgan Eggs and Haunted Creepers, I, th I think Ecop absolutely played it well, but it shows that uh, Mage sometimes just just doesn't have to deal with your board if, if you are not dealing uh, enough damage. And a tough start for Ecop where he opened with Abyssal Surgeon without flames, uh, Flame Imp, uh, he, he wasn't able to put enough pressure on Pavel to be concerned about his uh, health total. Yeah, that was one of the issues, wasn't it? I mean, we saw like the double egg come down and they did nothing for quite a while. <laughs> Yeah. And it's just like two slots on the board doing zero damage and okay, you put enough AoE, but when, as you said, the, the AoE stops like five damage and it's like, yeah, okay, I just won't AoE you because if he AoEs, he generates eight damage, so it's worth more to Pavel to leave the board up how it was. So that was a pretty good play from Pavel. I think he's been really solid with his Freeze Mage play overall so far. Yeah, absolutely. And now Freeze Mage is, is locked, so he'll, he, he will not have to play it again. The big question is, will Zoo win versus Druid or not, uh, but you know, even if we see Reno Lock versus Zoo, I've seen some crazy Reno Lock versus Zoo games where Zoo was able on the back of Dark Peddler get this Soul Fire or another PO and actually burst um, the Reno Lock before Reno Lock stabilizes and we've seen it even uh, before where uh, Reno Lock was never drawn and the deck just died. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's completely viable, and it's actually just a viable strategy with any form of a aggressive deck to, to beat Reno decks. So you literally just go all in. If they have Reno and stabilize, fair enough. If they don't, you should win. You know, like, and that's that's actually just the strategy that you can take most of the time. Because otherwise, trying to do a lot of board clear, like the Reno luck uh, ends up top decking a lot stronger than a lot of aggressive decks. So it means that they can't really. Uh, they recover a lot quicker from a board play than you do. Absolutely. Um, and about the Druid, Zoo versus Druid is a standard example where Druid will try to stop the Zoo with uh, early swipe, ramp, innervate keeper, something like that to deal with the early aggression. But if they can't, Zoo is uh, positioned perfectly to just uh, laugh at the swipe uh, or any AoE that Druid can apply and, and just kill the Druid before it stabilizes. Yeah, and the addition of like... Uh brand to the fairly this fairly recent new zoo list um it is really nice because brand and uh, and combined with a uh, dark peddler abusive or even just peddlers on their own they provide so many additional plus buffs along with like say dark iron dwarf but even getting through cards like druid of the claw that used to be quite difficult for druid becomes a lot easier when you can just go okay i'll just i'll just power overwhelm in this minion because i can just draw potentially two more from the dark peddler you know so you can like trade up so hard with this deck that even some of the uh, the big druid bombs aren't too difficult to deal with. Absolutely. All right, so we are here at, at game four, at the arena lock, and, and you can see already the Doomsayer, an interesting inclusion by Pavel. He's also playing Faceless and Arcan Golem. 
uh, to, to add some twist and burst in his deck. And from Ecop, the trusting zoo, but he missed his turn one. Yeah, so it's always rough when you, you have to skip that. I mean, he does have a pretty okay follow-up in terms of Peddler, the Creeper, um, even a PO if need be. But um, it is a bit rough, and when Pavel answers the Spider with a, with an Owl, Ecop's only real hope to defend this is to get a Void Caller or, or a Mortal Coil to deal with this Owl uh, and block it and keep the Creeper alive to continue to push for damage. I think because he is uh, pondering on what to take, that's actually not a moral coil. Oh, <laughs> an interesting card. But uh, he has double PO, so, so there is some burst. So maybe in Ecos' head, he actually thinks, hey, I, I have a good chance if I rush. And that's what you have to do. Like, when you play versus Arena Log, you, you have to rush them down. Yeah, and there is potential for, for like ludicrous amounts of damage <laughs> to, to come out from the zoo, as we said. So it's been really interesting. The PO even uh, on the egg now uh, generates a 2-1 if it like you know it hits a minion once. Um, so, you know, he does get some value from that. But Imp Gang Boss is a really nice pickup from Pavel. And um, the way to counter a deck like Zoo sometimes is to just generate just as many little annoying tokens and, you know, trade away and keep trading. What about Doomsayer? Because you're looking at 6 damage if there is a PO, so you're saying to your opponent, hey, you have to have a PO and Abusive, which he actually picked up Oof. right now, but still, that it does soak up 6 damage. Yeah, I think, so this is really tough. He either goes for tap and then maybe plays the Haunted Creeper to get the tokens, or he does clear because clearing kind of soaks up the damage, but also it guards your board a little bit and makes you be able to play like the creeper this turn. So at least then you get like the one two creeper, the two two minion, and you just throw, I guess you just throw the egg away. Um, but other than that, you, you just feel bad skipping a turn. That's the problem with leaving the doomsayer up. You do a little bit of damage, but nothing else. So I think you have to try and kill it here. Yeah, I agree with that. And. Um... That's a, that's only sh that only shows that Doomsayer actually worked uh, really well this game. And Pavel has still a lot of heal and a good follow-up anyway. Yeah, I mean, when Pavel's sitting on Reno, um, the um, gang boss, a heal bot, fast here. Nearly all his cards are heal. Um, and then, even now into the Twisting Nether, while he still holds the coin as well. Like, Twisting Nether's really nice because, uh, you know, other than the early game minions, a lot of the zoo minions aren't too sticky. Um, you know, we go into Dark Iron Dwarfs, the Doom Guards, Lothar, and so on. So after that, like a Twisted Nether can really shut your opponent down hard. Absolutely. And there is a Mortal Coil for Pavel. So drawing some cards here. Still no AoE apart from the Twisting Nether that you mentioned, but uh, I'm sure he's really comfortable. Also, picking up Sylvanas, where Reno wasn't the best play on turn 6, I, but you still want to have minions to fight versus Zoo, so Sylvanas can do a lot of work there. Yeah, and even if Sylvanas gets owled, it either eats a lot of minion damage anyway, or it steals something, you know, or, you know, one or the other, or it can continue to trade. So uh, I think Sylvanas was, I agree, a really good pick up there. And he's, Pavel must feel so comfortable. There's heal bot first if he wants to, like maybe heal bot tap on turn seven after Sylvanas. He has Reno if things get, you know, really rough with like Doom Guards coming down. Even aside from soul for a doom guard, you know, if need be. So got so many options. You should be feeling fairly comfortable. Absolutely. All right. So what's the play turn six? So is is it Sylvanas or is it now Reno suddenly? I Siphon Soul on four four seems pretty good as well. Yeah, I mean, there's even like uh, heal bot into the zombie chow is pretty reasonable as well. What about um, the, the Siphon Soul and then? Um, Twisting Nether on 7 with a coin. Yeah, it could be okay. I'm just thinking if you want to twist in Nether with the coin, then there's no need to kill a minion this turn, when you could heal instead. Um, Are you in danger of dying if you don't do anything? Yeah, I'm thinking like if you heal bot and then chow, and then um, and then follow up with twist in Nether, then you've not really lost too much. Um, and you still have Siphon Soul for a Doom Guard. There's Bran, so... Uh, oh. What a, I, I love that combo, by the way. Bran and Argus. Yeah. It's so good. Plus two, plus two, and Torn on two minions. Oh. It, it, it is pretty sweet. And uh, unfortunately, we will not see it because Defender of Argus makes a lot of sense on this board. Trying to to put uh, some minions outside of the Demon Wrath range, at least. And um, do you really think about playing around Twisting Nether? Like, is it even at the back of your mind? 
uh, I mean, Ecop's definitely thinking about that coin. You know, he knows it's still there. So there's definitely some consideration. And I wonder if skipping this turn now and just pushing is worth. Because you don't... If you push them hard enough and force them to, like, Reno on what health will they be to plus six, seven. So it doesn't feel great to Reno on that health when it's still aboard. And then if they clear, then you can maybe follow up with their... Uh, you know, the Bran Argus onto the Imp that should be left, probably, due to, like, a Shadow Flame. Um, obviously, Twisting Nether just destroys everything, but I think holding off at this point is pretty good. Wow. Yeah, that was a really good read from Ecop. But the, on the other hand, this allows Pavel to play slow, uh, slower as well. He doesn't have to force Twisting Nether because there is nothing really to destroy. Um, just Dutch Belcher into maybe even just coin the, the Farseer. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, I agree. Because the problem is now, well, not the problem, but for Pavel, the coin is becoming a, like less and less important because it's not you're not coining into any massive turns, um, and the faster you push his health a little bit in case there's say an owl P O P O Doom Guard or something stupid. Um, so he decided to go for Zombie Chow because Farseer can also have other uses. Maybe with Bran, it can actually heal for six, which is big as well. That's true. Yeah, I mean, and fifteen health with a belt drop is still pretty reasonable. Yeah. Are, are, are you liking the like Owl Bran Argus here? I I feel I, I like push. it. I mean, if you played versus Twisting Nether, that will not have any sense because then you will be just dead to Twisting Nether. But um, you you have to. I think this matchup is so bad for Zoo. That you you have to make hard choices and and think to yourself that hey there is basically no twisting letter and nothing in his hand I just have a, a clean way to kill because if you wait too much if you if you wait for for too long you might lose a, your window of opportunity to win the game yeah and and you know like you said it is really rough and the problem for Recap as well is he's not like at Doom Guards which are like the big you know power play in terms of damage so he's trying to just like. Just poke Pavel down and, and, and hope, but we can see that there's like three pretty, you know, pretty important healing cards in hand. Yeah, that's exactly true. So, did Ecop manage to finish his turn? Not playing the Flame Imp this turn, uh, trying not to overextend into AoEs. There are so many possibilities, like we haven't seen a Hellfire, there can be a Shadow Flame, there can be a Demon Wrath, and obviously Twisting Nether, so how do you not overextend? And still win. Hmm. Um, I think this is a reasonable Reno turn, actually. Yeah, I'm, part of me still just thinks like the, the problem with Reno is the follow up after Reno isn't great unless you just you're happy with tap Reno. Um, whereas there's potential that you could even Farsi Argus. Make, yeah, Farsi Argus or Healbot coin Argus. Because again, like you're starting to hit the point where what am I actually going to coin once I've got ten mana? That's going to be super impactful. Because if you like heal, but Argus, you're super safe on health. You can kill whatever you want. And, you know, there's still good bodies on the board. Yeah, I, I agree. But, uh, so there is a couple of options for Paddle. If you throw Reno, you do heal to the full. And you have a, you can kill the 2-2. Two -two. Like, you can even tap right now. Tap into Reno would still be pretty nice. Yeah. But, uh, we mentioned a couple of options um, available. Pavel really likes this coin. And he healed the Zombie Chow, so having a bit more defense instead of going for healing himself because of that Reno in hand. This is a... Uh, they, hmm. I'm trying to work out whether like healing the Chow was a bit brave. As opposed to... I suppose healing the Chow is very similar to healing Face, except I guess... It's still uh, fa health. Face can't be silenced, I suppose. And you've seen one PO already, but on the other hand, Ecop has a lot of cards. I really like how Ecop is playing this this game, where instead of rushing, he's actually giving himself himself a chance with having a lot of cards. At the moment, he has more cards in hand than Pavel, who is playing a control deck. Yeah, how strange. I think it's really, really good for Ecop. I agree because he's presenting Pavel with turns that he doesn't aren't quite don't feel good enough to play any of his cards on. You're like. Like 13 health Reno when you have a lot of other heal options. No, okay. You know, like, and then yes, he can heal himself and then taunt up, fine. But this twisting nether is not going to get a lot of value. And it's just like presenting with awkward turns that he doesn't really want to fully commit to. And again, filling fill this board up with imps. Like, the imps are doing damage, but do you want to twist the nether a board full of 1 1s? Like, 
It feels terrible. Yeah, it's actually so funny, the, the low value boards. There is an Arcane Golem for Pavel, but this is not what he wanted. But on the other hand, Raven, it's, it's what, like 4, 7 damage? So if you slam Life Tap into Reno, you should be in a good shape. And look at that! That's um, 16 damage right there. Yeah. Gonna be, this is looking pretty okay. I mean, if what well, the, the weird point we're at now is that Pavel needs to push damage because he kind of needs to twist in Nether, I guess, and then go for the combo afterwards. Um, because of cards like Argus that we you know we might will see very soon. Um, so he does need to clear off the board. It's whether he commits fully into this now or I kind of like the Lothar play, to be honest. Do you think Ecop is going to go for Bron Brand Bronze Beauty into Flame Imp? Uh, yeah, definitely. He definitely wants to take six <laughs> damage instead of three. That's the. It's a mistake uh, in terms of like, you we, know, negative battle him, cries we've all done. We see him frostbolt his own face at one point. So you know, sometimes you can forget about things, or like he he will just go for it. Grand, grand Lothab, you are not playing any spells. Yeah, I like that. So like, actually, I, I've been discussing this list with uh, with some people, and they were asking me like, why would you play Brown Bronze Beard? It doesn't do anything in the deck, and I was shocked. Because you have so many cards that actually work with it. You have Argus, you have Waltha. Uh, well, Flame Imp does work with it. But... Yeah, 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 Flame Imp does work with it. De de depending on how you define work. Yeah. <laughs> you have an interaction, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's probably a, a, a good a, a good, uh, good explanation. But Gormok is also really good with Bran. And, yeah. um, even that like, Peddler is I probably, the, the, I think, one of the highest value cards. Yeah. Um, because just being able to discover twice when Warlock has some of the best one drops is pretty insane. Absolutely. It's a great card to play. Pavel doing well here. Like, Dr. Boom was one of the better cards he could have drawn into, other than just sort of playing Sylvanas, you know, and, and that was it, with Lothar locking out the air, uh, board clear. Yeah, and Pavel is uh, having having such a dangerous hand because I don't think Ecob is... Well, he's probably expecting the combo because he's seen the the previous games. But uh, now he actually has to kind of play around it, right? He, you know there's a possible 16 damage coming at you. Gormok! <laughs> die, <laughs> Dr. Boom, die! You can just Gormok Boom down. It's like Gormok's a new and improved big game hunter. Wow. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. He isn't. Is he not going for Gormok, or is he going for full like phase? This is really interesting because, okay. as you said, Ecop has knowledge of Pavel's deck, yeah. so he knows this twisting nether. He knows there's a combo, and the, the longer the game goes on, these cards are more and more and more likely to actually be used. So you know, definitely uh, doing some work to play around this, but this is going to be a rough twisting nether if there ever was one. Yeah, this twisting nether is just really, really strong. For Pavel. I, I was surprised he played the Argus and the the Garmark. I thought it was going to be one or the other. So he was waiting not to overextend the whole game, but in the end he did overextend a bit. He still has a follow up though. Um, Pavel is at well, this... fourteen, and and Ico has a lot of minions to play. Yeah, and he, the good thing is two Void Walkers are actually pretty key when your opponent's playing the combo because there's no like. Nice way. There is a Shadow is Flame a in shadow Pavel's hand, so that that's the AOE he needs. But it just delays, you know, one more turn, I guess. Shadow Flame and the with egg. Uh, yeah, that's true. Actually, he can steal the four four. That might actually just be ruthless. Yeah. So this is the last push for Ecop. He will be trying to to get a bit more damage and thinking how not to overextend the Hellfire. But even with the Hellfire, he probably would be happy. Like he wants to top deck the Doom Guards. He wants Hellfire to deal damage, and he thinks, how much can he heal? But there is the second AoE that will be devastating. Yeah, I think Shadow Flame Sylvanas actually seals the, the deal on this game. Uh, because there is a f follow up with uh, Healbot. But like even uh, with that, right? Do you take the 4-4 four, uh, four, four, and Ecop will have to life top? Oh, he is actually it's, it's, in range now. Yeah, it's not even that. Yeah, I was going to say, he takes, um, he gets what, like 16 damage? Yeah. So he, he, he takes the 4-4. Four, four. Oh god, this Molten. Yeah, well. Casual uh, is playing a Molten he, as well. He takes the 4-4 four, four and um, regardless of the Molten being available, he then goes straight into the Arcane Golem combo. But, he, you know, Ecop did hold on to a Voidwalker. He, a swift nod from Ecop there is he's like... There is still a coin! 
Pavel just doesn't want to play the coin. I think he should just play the coin now. Just play it. <laughs> Why not? Have we seen zero Doom Guards for me, Cut? Because yeah, this feels like the, the roughest. Oh, there, there, there we go. There's one. You can play everything, right? Yeah, but uh, well, it, it only shows how difficult this matchup is. And even though I, I feel I feel like Eco played it really well, uh, positioning him uh, positioning himself in a in a way to almost win the game. Uh, Pavel, uh, with a burst, takes the game um, from Eco. But uh, it's not that bad for Eco because he still ends up in a Druid versus Zoo matchup where he will have an advantage. Yeah. That matchup probably took its toll on both uh, players pretty heavily. I mean, that was a considering you say Zoom versus uh, Reno, you don't really expect the matchup to go on that long and still be close. Absolutely. You know, like you've played matchups where, like, you know, you get to one health pretty quick, smash Reno, and it's like, yeah, okay, continue. You know, like, and then on the other way where you just burst a Reno lockdown. But that matchup, there were some really, really interesting plays, and both players did that really well and really close one. Well, this is Carson Champions League, Raven. So we have the best players playing against each other for a $10,000 prize pool. The winner is going to take 5,000. Group B today, and on Thursday, we're back with Group C, and then Friday, Group D. Yeah, I expect nothing less from the level of these players, to be honest. I agree. Okay, so Zoo versus Druid, and the key cards here um, are Innervate. Shade is pretty good in the beginning, but Double Force of Nature might not cut it. Uh, you want something like a Wild Grove, Keeper of the Grove, but Ecop missing the turn. Uh, well, he had a coin, so now he has a turn one play, but no one drops. Yeah, going into Double Creep is okay, as they're normally pretty awkward for the Druid to deal with. Um, swipe is a reasonably big draw, considering you're looking at Pavel's hand. But Ecop should be feeling pretty pretty okay at the moment because of the Owl and the Power Overwhelming, because being able to like just wipe off, you know, like a high value druid minion with like a creeper or a creeper token normally feels pretty good. But there's another good draw from Pavel in, in the form of the uh, Keeper of the Grove. So one of these key cards you were discussing, Nymphshare, it's already in his hand. Yeah, suddenly he will have a turn four play, turn, far, uh, turn, turn five play, which are really good. And Force of Nature, even though you're looking at it, yeah, Force of Nature is a turn nine card with the combo. Not really versus Zoo. Like, you're happy to just throw it away on turn six and kill almost the whole board. Yeah, definitely. And uh, this feels pretty good. Oh, okay. He's doing. Yeah, I suppose this is fine. Yeah. So he's clearing the board minus like a 1 1, but a 1 1 isn't too much of a threat. Uh, and the shade just being 5 4, pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, the owl is a card, but it might even just see power overwhelming. So. If you play Knife Juggler into Owl, you have a 50-50 chance to kill the Shade right there, but it's really risky. If you miss, you, you'd lose your Knife Juggler, so your turn will be terrible. If you go for PO, you, you can play Knife Juggler, which is, I think 50-50 is probably the best, the best bet you have, because whatever else you do, you end up with an awkward situation. Like If you use PO, uh, which P where PO is a really good card versus other big creatures, you will end up with a just single knife juggler or not play anything there. Yeah, it's definitely rough. And this is just gone. This is, this matchup looked really good for Ecop initially, but Pavel being able to just draw into these, like, you know, the two four drops and then now the shade is pretty huge. Nothing feels good here. And I think Ecop's going to get punished pretty hard if he misses this. So he hits with the juggle. He has to be happy about yeah. it. But then Pavel has a full up with Keeper of the Grove. Or even the shade with the hero power is not terrible. You did see... Have you seen Implosion? You... Oh, it's risky. <laughs> Playing shade into a juggler. Oh man, he has the balls. <laughs> <laughs> he's just gonna do it. Sure, why not? I mean, let's like to be fair, what he's doing now is like... Implosion isn't really a card anymore. At least for this turn, because you can't implosion a stealth minion. Yeah. So he's got to rely on his opponent having two minions to play this turn, and then both juggles hit in. And we can see that, you know, Pavel's actually not going to get punched too hard for this, because there's no... What do you even play? Like, Gormog. do you want to throw the Doom Doom Guard on the board and just hope? No, Gormog, I think, is absolutely fine. So this You've is seen a slide, I guess, right? It's great when it, when you play it as a combo card, like as a, when you activate it, but it's just a 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. But as you said earlier, the um, the force of nature is actually just pretty good to clear up zoom minions. 
Um, so, the, and the fact that Pavel's now got an Ancient of Law to just keep curving, he can shred her if he really needs to, or just Force of Nature again to kill off this Doom Guard. His opponent's just thrown two cards away, so already this game's looking more and more secure for Pavel, even though he's gone uh, we're a little bit low on health. Well, but he knows who has possibilities, right? And the Doomgar is, is still on board, unless uh, unless Innervate Wrath and kill the Doomguard, and then you are, you have the five five. I think that's actually a valid play. There's almost no reason not to, right? Like, yeah. You, why why have the potential of this minion causing problems when you can start the turn uh, or start your opponent's turn with a five five on an empty board uh, for you, and then they have to do something to deal with a five five you know, with one card in hand at the moment. So this is looking really good for Pavel. And he's even got follow-up, Living Root, Shredder. He's got Silence if he needs it. He can Force of Nature if he cop swarms the board again. He's got an answer for almost any outcome that he can, a cop can come back with now. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually amazing how Pavel turned around uh, with... Uh, but um, can we say that Ecop had a slow start? With double Haunted Creeper, it looked all right. Yeah, I think Ecop's start was fine. It was just that... Um, Pavel drawing straight into like the innovate, uh, he innovated shade, didn't he? And then uh, he looked like he had a dead hand, but then going into like the swipe, and then you know having the, the the wrath afterwards, and being able to curve from that point really helped Pavel out because the two creepers are good unless there's like a swipe and a way to prep those creepers. So you know we did see that, and now the game looks like it's just being locked down. Now it's going to be a real struggle for Ecop to come back. Yeah, he just has the Defender of Argus in hand, so he's still trying to fight back, but he is forced to tap almost every turn, putting him lower. So if uh, Pavel gets something like... Uh, does, he, does he even need the uh, Savage Roar here? Uh, how much damage does he... He has, uh, so say, he has 10 damage just from hand, because he can just double Living Roots to face. Um, now, because obviously because of the taunts, you know... Uh, Pavel needs to just push through here, get through these eggs, but gonna be kind of rough. I mean, Pavel is on low health, but he can just keep trading, and he has two living roots if he just wants to kill stuff with. Like, he just clears the board again, and eventually he's gonna draw Savage Roar, or just win through the sheer power on the board. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, he, he is going to draw a card with Wild Growth next turn, so uh, without taking damage. I would not. There is a powerful only for Ecob though in his hands. So I would not say that Ecob is out. Uh, well, he's not. Certainly, he's not out of the tournament because even if he loses versus Pavel right now, he will be facing uh, someone else in the losers uh, bracket. The winner of um, let's see, we have Hoy, Hoy and, and RDU. Uh, yeah, Hoy and RDU. Yeah. So I think here for Pavel, there's no reason not to clear the board if he can. Oh, okay, he's just going to swarm. That's that's also fine. As he said, the the trade up potential is really you know something to fear against Zoo. But I suppose one minion on board to do 13 damage with only two cards plus potential three with a tap. It, that is actually asking quite a lot from the Druid. But does he even still has a chance if he goes for power overwhelming six damage to face and then he needs to deal seven. Something like a Doomguard into tap, abusive. Uh, there will yeah. be hero power though, so... What does oh, he get? Now he gets Dark and Dwarf. Dwarf, so potentially how much damage is there? Is he dead next turn? That's 6, 10, 11, um, 15. 16 with hero power. Yeah, not dead yet. Yeah, this is actually, is Ecop actually can come back here? If uh, I imagine like Savage Roar now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, well, Dr. Boom's pretty reasonable. Yeah, Dr. Boom is definitely fine. So I guess Pavel runs all his 1 1s into the 1 1s? Well, he's well, got a 1 1 1 into a 2 1. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. all you do now is, you, because of Dr. Boom, you just remove everything off the board, I think. And just don't give the option for the Warlock to be able to do anything too crazy here. So, you are saying Dr. Boom on board is better than the hope of winning the game off the top? Uh, I yeah. Because it is, yeah. <laughs> so, like, would, would you... So, honest, honest question. Would you run the 4-2 into the 1-1 one, one here? Because I know I would. I would attack the 1-1. One, one, just to yeah. deny any any buff possible. Uh, I've, um, 
I've played a good amount of Zoo recently, and I know the type of stuff that deck can do in terms of bursts. So uh, I would definitely remove that card. And good play from Pavel, getting rid of it. There is an argument though, outs. because if you go for face, if you go for face, you set up lethal for the next turn, possibly. Yeah, that's true. I just think like as, as a druid, you can afford to just not give him lethal because you have Doctor Boom on board. There is a Doom Guard, and there is some damage here. This is the seven. Do you? Yeah, you have to just go face, right? Uh, it actually. Oh, has, sorry. No, it's uh, you played the, the thing that turn. Yeah, I'm I'm talking crap. Um, <laughs> That's fine, that's and fine. That's that was a really long match, Raven, but... This yeah, I was so... just like, all, all this maths, guys, all this maths. <laughs> oh man, that was tough. Like, Ecop almost had it, an advantage 2-1. to one. He just needed to win one game with the Zoo, and he had a good matchup versus the Druid. But Pavel was able to turn it around. That was an impressive match overall. Yeah, really crazy set as well. And one of the, um, one of the few sets, I think, so far, the only set that's gone 3-2, I believe. Yeah. And most so of that them, was... they are a bit faster with 3-0 uh, or 3-1. Yeah, so that was a, a good set overall. But as we said earlier, um, Ecop's not out. He um, He's going to play the winner of RDU and Hoy. So, so that was a chance to qualify. Whereas Pavel, first player through with some pretty solid performances, actually. Absolutely. All right, guys. So the next match is RDU versus Hoy, and that's an elimination match. So whoever loses that is eliminated from the tournament. And the winner is going to face Ecop in another elimination match. The winner of that is going to advance to the um, top eight playoffs. Pavel already through, already through. So a great performance from the Russian player. But for now, we're going into a short break. So give us some time while we prepare the players. Stay tuned. <laughs> 